Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博然。Australian media is surprised and confused about how a group of people fishing could become the victims of a disgusting anti-China attack recently, despite that country's flagrant anti-China warmongering over the past few years. We'll take a look at a video of the attack and address the elephant in the room. Plus, the U.S. embassy in Sudan has conducted another shameful nighttime evacuation and left their citizens stranded, while China's embassy has begun evacuating citizens and ensures staff will remain at their posts until that process is complete. This is Reports on China. I'm Andy Boham in Shanghai. Let's get reporting. Apologies for the minimal content over the past two weeks while I've been away in New Zealand. Filming the new chapter in our upcoming documentary on Rewi Ali, a New Zealander who lived in China for the last sixty years of his life, and is now known as one of China's top ten international friends. That short documentary will be out in the coming months. But now to Sudan, where tensions between that country's military and its main paramilitary force have severely escalated, leading to hundreds of deaths and fears that civil war may take hold. Potentially destabilizing the region. In true USA form, President Biden ordered the embassy in Khartoum to evacuate via helicopters during the night, leaving U.S. citizens in the country stranded and having to fend for themselves. Take a look. Daring evacuation of the American embassy in Sudan. U.S. Special Operations Forces, including the Navy's elite SEAL Team Six, were involved in the planning and the execution of the operation. Roughly 100 American diplomats and their families rushed to safety, escaping the war-torn country. The military using three Chinook helicopters in the middle of the night. Those choppers only on the ground for about an hour during the evacuation. So, does that kind of pitiful evacuation sound familiar to you at all? A couple of previous incidents seem to be coming to mind. Remember the shameful evacuation of Vietnam in 1975? If not, you'll definitely remember the debacle that was the U.S. evacuation of Afghanistan in 2021, which left countless U.S. citizens to fend for themselves against the Taliban. Now, in stark contrast, China's government has begun evacuating Chinese nationals and has promised their embassy will remain for as long as it takes. In order to ensure that they are the last ones there, take a look at these two videos, which show the massive contrast between U.S. and Chinese responses to the conflict. The U.S. embassy in Khartoum's、uh, security alert on April 16、uh, stated that due to uncertainty, secure, uncertain security situation in Khartoum and closures of the airport, Americans should have no expectations of a U.S. government-coordinated evacuation at this time. We expect that will remain the case. It is imperative that U.S. citizens in Sudan make their own arrangements、uh, to safe、uh, to stay safe in these difficult circumstances. We advise U.S. citizens to remain sheltered in place. China is Sudan Embassy staff attention to security situation in Sudan. We are monitoring the situation in Sudan. We are monitoring the situation in Sudan. We are m o n i t 外交部也将采取有效措施，保障使馆人员的安全。Well, I certainly know which government I'd rather have looking after me. This reminded me of a massive 7.5 Richter scale earthquake in New Zealand in 2016, when Chinese nationals were among the first to be evacuated by the Chinese consulate, angering some British tourists who were all but abandoned by their own government and had to mortgage their home to pay $4,000. For helicopter rescue, the earthquake left the small coastal town of Kaikoura isolated from the rest of the country, and 1,300 tourists trapped. After it became clear that there was no imminent plan to evacuate those tourists, the Chinese consulate in Christchurch chartered a number of helicopters to rescue the 60 Chinese nationals trapped there, angering other tourists who had been all but ignored by their own governments. Let's take a look. It costs us everything. Like we're, we're putting our mortgage on, our mortgage money up to get out of here tonight. It's like four grand to get us out. So British government, what a disgrace! They've like done nothing. We phoned them up, and they honestly, they just said 
I'll, we'll, ring we'll, you in a we'll bit. ring you in we'll a bit. Ring you tomorrow. And like three hours later, they hadn't called. Four oh. hours later, they hadn't called. Five hours later. Um, the Chinese embassy had employed um, a lot of helicopters to move a big group of Chinese that we were visiting Kaikoura today. Um, with the road shut, there was only one way to get them to cross you, that was to fly them. That British couple, Scott and Celine Papworth, said they worked seven days a week and saved for more than a year to go to New Zealand for their dream holiday, and that it was ruined when they realised their own government could do nothing to ensure their safety after a natural disaster. Check out this quote in the New Zealand Herald at the time. They were furious as they continuously watched a large group of Chinese tourists getting choppered out of the small coastal town, thanks to the Chinese government, while calls to the British embassy were falling flat. I can imagine it must have been quite the shock to realise that everything they'd ever been told about China and the evil Chinese government was wrong. Oh well, lesson learned. Now to Australia, where video of a group of fishermen in Brisbane has surfaced being attacked by an angry local wielding two crutches who continually physically attacked the group, calling them Chinese and demanding to see inside their bags. Now the infuriating thing is that Nine News Australia, who posted the video to Twitter, seems dumbstruck about how such a vile attack could happen and completely unaware that it is exactly their work, them being the Australian media at large, with the help of warmongers like the Australian Strategic Policy Institute, or ASPE, that has led to ordinary Aussies fearing Chinese people and believing their lives are literally at risk. Take a look. No, no, leave it. Go down, I said. Down, I said. Go down. Down. Stop. Oh, Down. Why? What's wrong? Down. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Chinese. Go down. No, no, I'm not Chinese. You Chinese. Go down. We're going home. You're not going home. You're going. Chinese. Get off here. What's in there? What's in there? What's in there? Why are you touching him, man? Trust! He has stuff! You f***ing... You f***ing... Oi! Don't jump in there, no idea. Don't be a you, you c***. You f***ing Chinese c***. Disgusting. Now, I did ponder the idea of pixelating the man's face, but in the end I decided he does not deserve any such courtesy. Australian media over the past few years has been extremely anti-Chinese, using sloppy, warmongering reports from groups like ASPE, which is literally funded by a number of US weapons manufacturers, to frighten ordinary Australians into believing they face imminent attack from China, and that their very way of life is under threat. Take a look at a snippet from one particularly egregious report which was broadcast in prime time there. You believe it will be inevitable that there will be forced conflict. We've got a significantly increased defense. The United States will go to war if necessary in order to protect Taiwan. Of course, we have alliance obligations. The Chinese PLA has 975,000 troops. Victory is anything but assured. Are we ready for war? We are acting as quickly as we can. I pray that they will get it right. The Australian population is particularly brainwashed by ludicrous anti-China rhetoric. Just a few months ago, my mother, who lives in Australia, called me and asked if China was really planning to invade Australia. The propaganda is so strong and ordinary people are too easily swept up by it. The only way to stop hideous attacks like the one that group faced in Brisbane recently is to stop lying to the Australian population. Defunding and ignoring ASPE is also another move that needs to be taken ASAP, one which is luckily in the process anyway, according to some sources who say the current Albanese government is far from accommodating of that group of military shields. Anyway, that's it for today, you guys. As always, I would love to hear what you have to say. Please let me know down below and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.
Thank you.